Hey friends out there in YouTube land, Robert Ham here with Robert Ham Photography. Today I'm answering Giovanni's questions about neutral density filters and shallow apertures, such as why not use your ND8 plus your F5.6? Why do you suggest F8 in the shade and neutral density 8 plus F8 in the sunlight? It's a really tricky question. I'm going to get into that for you now, Giovanni. But before we do, I want to share with you guys one special thing. Don't forget, I've got a camera that's launching over on Kickstarter in just a couple days, January 15th with worldwide shipping. The new box one, which is a modern box camera offering one two hundredth of a second shutter speed, apertures from f5.6 all the way to f32, as well as a really innovative lens inside cartridge design, which means that we're able to change focal lengths of the lens as well as the viewfinder. So these are firsts in box photography. It's really really quite cool actually. Of course we shoot color and black and white film. Go check out hamcamera.com for more information as well as signing up for the newsletter. It's uh, a great way to stay in tune. Okay, let's get right down to it. This is a really tough question because many people that want to understand TL70 photography and how Instax film works are coming from a point and shoot perspective and what happens is they find out that the TL70 actually offers its best results when you have a lesson in the Sunny 16 rule. So that's where we're gonna start. Although this camera shoots well in an automatic mode where the camera can choose a shutter speed based on your aperture, it does best when you know exactly what kind of shooting situation you're in. That way you can tailor the response to you. Now, let's preface this just a little bit. If you don't know what the Sunny 16 rule is, then it would be helpful to go find some more information about that after this video, but I'll share with you very quickly what the Sunny 16 rule is. Before electronic exposure devices were built into cameras, photographers needed a way to determine whether an exposure would be appropriate for a specific shooting situation. What they did was they figured that at an aperture of f16, if you used a film speed and a shutter speed that were the same, you could be guaranteed relatively good and consistent results. You see, the rule is just a rule. Sometimes you can go plus or minus a little bit, and people have found that different films work best with slightly different situations. But in general, if you're using a 100 speed film and you're using a 100 speed shutter, then you can go ahead and use your f16 aperture and be assured a good picture in a sunny environment. Now, a sunny environment is one of those that's categorized as looking at the shadows on the ground. When you see a very hard shadow and a very dark shadow, that means that you're in a very bright environment that the sunny 16 rule will be best. There's also a sunny 8 rule and things that go along those lines because when you look at the shadow and see that the shadow begins to diffuse and lighten and not become as dark, you can change f16 to f11 to f8 and maintain the same reciprocity between your film speed and your shutter speed and get a great result. You see, the sunny 16 rule is a way to read and meter light with your eyeballs and it's really freeing once you learn how to do it. You don't need a camera to do it for you. You can do it yourself and get better, more confident results on your own. This camera allows you to do that. Check these images out back here. They're beautiful because I treat this camera like a manual camera. Now, it works in aperture priority mode, offering apertures of f5.6, f8, f16, and f22 with shutter speeds all the way up to 1 500th of a second. The user can directly control the apertures to anyone that you would like, but you can only control the shutter speed as plus or minus one stop of exposure compensation. That just means that the camera is going to choose a shutter speed, and then when you look at the situation, not knowing what the shutter speed the camera has chosen, you can tell the camera to even make it darker or brighter by one stop. And you might think that that sounds a little bit awkward. But it's really not, because the camera is going to photograph based on the Sunny 16 rule, so you can figure out what kind of shutter speed it's going to be in your head just by looking at it. And after just a couple of packages of film, you'll have that nailed down pretty easily. For me in my environment, where I'm shooting at the beach, I generally only shoot in environments that are sunny. If it's a cloudy day, pro tip, don't shoot color film through your Mini 90 or through your TL70, or through your Lomo Instant, or through your Automat Wide. Don't shoot color film on a day that the film was not made for. I don't even usually like to shoot color film indoors. Instead, shoot black and white film. 
because the color of the film will change based on the, the light source. And if your film is, uh, if your light source, like the sun, is behind clouds, it'll turn out dark and ugly and it'll look muddy. You'd be better off shooting some beautiful black and white film. In fact, with a TL70 on a drab day, I find that I absolutely love the way it renders black and white film. And it's my favorite go-to. That being out of the way, what I have found is that when I'm photographing outdoors in bright sunlight on a sunny day, I live at the beach, Virginia Beach, beaches in the name of my city tells you that it's a bright and sunny place, on a bright sunny day, I actually don't shoot and photograph underneath the bright wide open sky. Instead, I choose to photograph in the shade. On a bright day where the sun is making hard shadows, if you go into a garden that has the canopy of trees over your head, you will change that EV exposure value of 15 or 16, which is really harsh for the film, to about an EV of 13 or 14, which is better for the film. And let's talk about that. The film itself, the ISO 800 speed film, means that the film is very sensitive to light. The film has a natural range of about 4.5 EV all the way about to a up to about an EV of 15. That means that when we're shooting underneath the direct sun with nothing to help us, the film is already being maxed out at its brightness. It's gonna be in a situation where overexposure can happen very quickly. So on a bright sunny day, when I choose not to use an exposure compensation or any kind of filter, I shoot underneath the shade of a tree or something so that I can shoot at F8 and still get a great exposure. So for me, I suggest F8 in the shade with plus or minus exposure compensation based on how many hot spots of sun are coming through the canopy of the trees. This also works well when you're in the shadow of a building. And I also try to keep the sky, that very, very bright sky, out of the picture in these situations because it will cause the camera to choose a faster shutter speed and the actual brightness of the sky may blow out the rest or the darker parts of the image. Real simple. You either get dark parts that are too dark or your bright parts that are too bright. And that's because the sky is usually three or four times brighter than the current area that you're at. So if you're photographing in the shade and the exposure value is about 13 to your subject that you're doing a portrait with, if you put the sky in the background, that blue sky, it's probably about a 17 or an 18 and it's going to blow out. Instead, move the composition so that you have trees and foliage in the background that are the same kind of exposure value as your subject. Also, another pro tip, make sure that you don't put your finger or keep shade over the electronic eye. You want this inf uh, reflexive index system to actually be in the same lighting environment as your subject. So if your subject's in shade, it should be in shade. If your subject's in the bright sun and it's in shade, you're going to have an underexposed image and vice versa. If, it's, uh, if your subject's in the bright sun and this is in the shade, you're going to have an overexposed image. So pro tip there. Continuing on along, I realized that with the neutral density kit, I would be really great out in the bright sunlight where the exposure values for me by the beach are usually 16, 17, 18. The closer I get to the water, it's more like uh, an exposure value of 17. Putting a three-stop neutral density filter takes that back. It gates three stops of light. So if I'm at the beach photographing where the light is an indie or is an exposure value of 17, if I count back using this three stops, 17, 16, 15, 14, and then instead of using F5, 6, I use F8, I get down to 13. I'm at an exposure value of roughly 13 hitting the camera. And that means that now I'm able to put my shutter speed on the fastest by changing my exposure compensation to plus and composing properly. Now I'm going to get a really nicely exposed image. In fact, in those situations, my light meter usually tells me at f8, I would need right around one two thousandth of a second, but putting a three stop neutral density filter puts me right in the ballpark. Let's do it. 2000 to 1000, 1000 to 500, 500 to 250. That means that I've brought that back three stops well within the range of the camera. The camera can now choose to shoot however it would like. In that situation, it's going to choose 250, most likely. By putting it on plus exposure compensation, I make sure that it's shooting at one 500th of a second, and that's how I get to blue skies in my images, as well as the beautiful rendition of the face and shadow lines. I don't get any muddy images, and you guys have seen them. That's why I do it. Giovanni, that's how I get to it. It's not that you can't open up and use F5.6. It's what I found that the most general concern that works well for me is ND8 in the shade and F8 plus ND8 in the bright environment that a beach 
offers. Guys, I'm Robert Hamm with Robert Hamm Photography. I hope you have enjoyed this conversation today. Giovanni, thank you for asking such a great question. I want to thank you for watching and remind you I will catch you on the flip side.